Hello everybody! Next off the pile is a Frankenplane project. It's going to make the hardcore collector shutter. It's an A78. Let's take a look at her. Just like the regular number 78, it's a duplex Philister and Rabbit plane. The book value on an A78 is a bit salty at $450 to $900. The plane is 8.5 inches long and has a 1 and 1 half inch wide iron. When being used, the aluminum sole and fence would leave black marks on the wood and the fence would bend quite easily. This one's a Franken plane because the depth stop, the lever cap, and the fence are not the original aluminum. They're replacements. Without those parts, the body alone is worth somewhere between $150 and $300 according to my book. This one's worth even less. Right here underneath the iron, there's a small tab of aluminum that's missing that fits right there. So that's going to give me the opportunity to try to fix it. And to do that, this old girl needs to be broke down. And with her all broke down, now you can see the part that's broken right there. Just above the adjustment, the depth adjustment lever. Right hand side of that slot. That's supposed to be the same as what it is in the left hand side. If there's any part value at all left in this old body, it's if I fix that broken piece. The fence, the depth stop, and the lever cap. Supposed to be aluminum and they're not. They're cast iron from a regular 78. First step on this job is to see if I can fix that missing piece. So the plan is to use my aluminum welding wire to weld that missing piece back up. I went into this weld with a good bit of apprehension because it's only the second time I've ever welded aluminum. But I'd say it came out looking pretty good which means I'm going to go on with this restoration. What made this difficult was having the, the depth adjustment right there because I couldn't get it off. The next step, I'm going to put this body in my sandblaster and clean it up. Sandblasting is done. I'm going to go over the entire thing with some 3 aught steel wool and a wire brush. Wherever I can't get with the steel wool, I'm going to get it with the wire brush. I'm not rubbing real hard. I'm just buffing it back up to where it looks nice and uh, aluminum again. The small end of the wire brush gets down into the deep crevices where I can't get with the steel wool. And with the steel wooling of the body done, I'm going to use a piece of sanding sponge that I cut down smaller, a sanding stick, and my 4 aught steel wool to work on that depth adjustment lever. The sanding stick is first. And next is the sanding sponge. And finally, it's going over with the uh, 4 aught steel wool. And with the depth adjustment lever done, it's time to move on to the machine surfaces. I'm going to lap those. It's both sides, the bottom and the lower edge where the iron comes through the throat. That I'm going to use the sandpaper stick to get that part done. Left side first, making sure that it's flat. Aluminum isn't going to take a whole lot to get it lapped down. Give you a couple passes and take a look at it. And continue that until it is all flat. And with the left side done, it's on to do the right side. Same thing, make sure it lays flat. First pass, take a look at it, see if it's not doing anything crazy. And continue to lap it down. I think this should about do it. That's looking good. Let's take a close look at it. So the right side looks good. Left side is good. That leaves the bottom. Just like the sides. Make sure it's flat, make a few passes and take a look at it. High on both ends, low in the middle. Shouldn't take a whole lot to make it through. And this should do it, so let's take a look at it. Left side is looking really good. Bottom looks a whole lot better. And so does the right side. Next I'm going to use one of my sanding sticks and I'm going to clean up this area where the iron rests right here. And right down here, there's my sanding stick. Showed you how to make those in another video. I can't tell which way the original machine was. I'm going to go this way here, left to right across the uh, machine face. Get my sanding stick in there flat. Not going to rub too hard. Just want to polish it up a little, take a look at it, and repeat till it's evened out. After the sanding stick, I'm going to get in there with some 
three out steel wool and go over with that to finish it up. And with that done, it's time to break out my stripper and put her to work. I need to remove the japanning from the fence and the depth stop. I'm going to brush it on, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then rinse it off. And while the stripper does her thing, it's time to go to work and clean up the iron. When the trademark stamps are weak, you got to be careful not to scrub them away. So there's a look at it cleaned up. It's extremely unlikely that this old plane will ever be put back to work. But just in case it does, I'm going to sharpen the iron and the first step is to lap this area flat right here. And with the back side flattened down to 7000 grit, it's time to move on and sharpen the 25 degree bevel. I'll be using my general number 810 chisel and plane blade sharpener to do that. And I'm back on my lapping station with 150 grit paper. And just like the back side, finished sharpening is going to be a 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, 7,000 grit paper. If the next owner decides that they do want to use this old plane, she's got a razor sharp edge and is ready to go. While I was sharpening the iron, the old stripper performed like a pro. The depth stop and the fence look great. They're going over to the sandblaster to be finished up. Same thing with that lever cap that's going to go into the sandblaster too. The blasting is done and at first glance you know they're really close to looking like aluminum but I'm not happy with that. I'm going to try something to uh, see if I can get them closer. First I'm going to give all the parts a mist coat of lacquer. That coat sealed the metal but it also made it darker. Look at that. And this is what I'm going to use to fix that. It says aluminum, so let's see what it does. Just like the lacquer, I'm only going to give this a light coat. And while that paint dries, the last thing to do is to clean up the small parts. I'm going to start with the screw slots using a uh, dental pick and some folded up sandpaper to fit the slot. Dental pick works good to get the initial rust and crud out. And then I've got four layers of 150 grit folded to fit tight in the slot. And that's going to make it look like new again. I've got a couple tiny burrs around the screw slot. I can take those off by using 150 grit on my sanding block. And for the fence rod, I'm going to scrape it first and then go over it with 150 grit paper. And after that, everything goes over to my wire wheel. Small parts are done and I'm giving them a coat of rim oil. That stuff works great. And while cleaning up the small parts, the paint on the fence, lever cap, and depth stop dried and look at that. It matches the body perfect. The depth stop and the fence, the sides facing us right now are machine surfaces. They've got a little bit of paint on them. I'm going to clean them off and flatten the surfaces on my lapping stage. Depth stop first in the same direction of the original machining mark. And the same thing for the fence. And they both cleaned up really nice. There they are. All that's left to do is wipe off the rim oil and put a coat of paste wax on the iron, the machine surfaces of the depth stop, the fence, and the machine surfaces of the plane itself. One last look at the old plane, all her parts, before I put it back together. Wow, I never thought this plane would come out looking this good. My replacement parts, man, they look just like the rest of the aluminum. My aluminum weld came out way better than I thought it would. This old A78 turned out to be a fine looking plane. Here's a close up comparison of that depth stop and the aluminum body. But I'm also honest about the work I do and straightforward that these are replacement parts. The hardcore collectors are going to be just going nuts about doing something like this. So this plane isn't for the hardcore collector. The way I see it is I took a plane that was in the trash literally because when I saw it was broken that's where I put it. I pulled it back out and this is what we've got. It's not every day that you get to see an A78 taken for a test drive 
And another thing to consider is probably not too many people that are stupid enough to test drive one of these planes, as rare as what they are. I've got a three quarter inch piece of popper and vise. We're going to see what she will do. There's no doubt this old plane definitely cuts. Just a few more passes to be good enough to see how she does. I see she passes. Let's take a look at it. Yes, it's safe to say that the old A78 will cut rabbits. The proof is right there. Just in case you didn't already know, my goal is to do a video on every one of the planes that Stanley made. There's about 250 some odd numbered planes if you count the corrugated and the flats. That's a lot of planes. And the A78, that's one that I thought I would never do. I'm going to give myself credit for this one, but I'm not going to cross it off the list because it's missing the important parts. It's really not a complete A78. But man, it looks good. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see what comes off the pile next, but until then, time for supper. Bye.